Hello everyone, welcome to the video on antibacterial agents. In this video, I will explain about antimicrobial agents, what are antibacterial agents, what do you mean by antibiosis, and we will see cell wall inhibitors of non beta lactams. Cell wall inhibitors are two categories beta lactams and non beta lactams. In this video, I will explain about non beta lactams. These are my channel credentials. I have more than 90 videos uploaded, more than 1500 subscribers, and more than 30,000 views. So this is my channel. If you like the video content, do subscribe. Getting into the topic. Now, antimicrobial. See, the word microbial originated because there are organisms which can be only seen through microscope. So at the beginning, they thought organisms which can be viewed with the help of microscope are called as microbials. But later on, the definition is little bit changed. Nowadays, it will include antibacterials, antivirals, antiparasitic agents and antifungals. They also include antihelminthetic parasites. Even though they are not microscopic organisms, they are included. So antimicrobials means all these agents will come. Now this class, as I told you, I am going to explain about antibacterial agents. In order to understand them, we need to see the structure of a bacteria. Bacteria is a prokaryote. That means it doesn't have a distinctive nucleus. DNA is readily available in cytoplasm and you can see this is not a chromosome. Chromatid proteins are not surround this DNA. Hence, it is also known as a naked DNA. You will be reading this in microbiology. So, the DNA will be like this. You have proteins and enzymes, RNA and ribosomes are there. All these contents are surrounded by cell membrane and then cell wall. The cell wall is an important constituent of this bacterial cell. Mammalian cells, eukaryote cells do not have this cell wall. Now there is a difference in cell wall in gram positive and in gram negative. You can see on the top of this cell membrane you have cell wall is there. In case of gram positive there is a thick outer layer of peptidoglycan in gram positive because of this high amount of peptidoglycan it gives positive stain that is why it is known as gram positive whereas in gram negative there is very small amount of peptidoglycan is there and then outer membrane is there that the total thing is considered as cell wall because there is a very small amount of peptidoglycan they do not give positive test to gram stain hence they are called as gram negative so peptidoglycan is the major constant in the cell wall of gram positive whereas in gram negative it is very small amount. Now cell wall is very essential for bacterial survival. The reason is cell wall will protect the bacteria from external pH, cell wall will protect bacteria from osmosis and cell wall will protect bacteria from enzymes like lysozymes which are present in human blood may kill the bacteria if the cell wall protection is there. So you can see cell wall is essential for bacterial survival. Now all the components can be attacked by antibacterial agents. Now look at them. See cell wall can be inhibited by all these drugs. Take a screenshot of this slide which covers all the drugs, all antibacterials. In that you have all these are considered as beta lactams. In that beta lactams you have penicillin, cephalosporin, monobacterium, carbapenems. In non beta lactams you have vancomycin, bacitracin, some more drugs are there. We will see in the course of this lecture. Plasma membrane inhibitors, polymyxins and lipopeptides are there. Ribosomes are protein synthesis inhibitors. You have agents which are inhibiting 30S subunit and agents which are inhibiting 50S subunit. And there are drugs which affect metabolic pathways. We have already seen sulfonamide and trimethoprim. There are some other drugs are also there. Finally, DNA and RNA synthesis can also be inhibited by all these drugs. So these are all the drugs which are considered as antibacterial agents. We will see in detail. Look at them. This slide is, is also an important one. Look at the things. See, cell wall biosynthesis is, see this is mode of action. This is the target and these are all the drug classes. So cell wall biosynthesis is inhibited by all these drugs. You have beta lactams, non-beta lactams are there. Beta lactams, the target is penicillin binding protein. In some of the textbooks it is given as PBP. So there are penicillin binding proteins to which penicillins bind and inhibit the cell wall formation. Whereas glycopeptide, 
inhibit peptidoglycan subunit synthesis. Bacitracin will inhibit the transport of the subunit. We will see them in detail in this lecture itself. The next one is protein biosynthesis inhibitor. As I told you already, 30 years ribosomes are inhibited by aminoglycosides and tetracyclines, whereas 50 years ribosomal units are inhibited by macrolides, lincosamides, chloramphenicol, oxazolidine, dions. Now, the next one, there are agents which are which will disrupt membrane, lipopolysaccharides like polymyxin B, cholestin and daptomycin. And then, there are agents which will inhibit nucleic acid synthesis. RNA synthesis is inhibited by rifamycin, DNA synthesis is inhibited by fluoroquinolones. Finally, antimetabolites which will inhibit the synthesis of either folic acid or mycolic acid, this is selective towards tuberculosis organism. In tuberculosis organism, the cell wall is made up of mycolic acid, it is not peptidoglycan. Hence, this one is selective to tuberculosis. Again, this slide will cover all the mechanisms of action in classes of antibacterial agents. Moving further, now let us see this word antibiosis. This man, Alexander Fleming, he is the one who first identified penicillins. And uh, because of his work, we, will, we, we are able to use all these beta-lactam antibiotics nowadays. But let us understand this word. Before getting into this, let us understand a word called as symbiosis. Now, sim means together, biosis means living organism. In our intestine and uh, intestine and gut, we have so many microorganisms are there. They are known as intestinal flora, like Escherichia coli. What happens is Escherichia coli will take nourishment from our human body, but these organisms will help us synthesize vitamin K and help in digestion. You know, you call it as probiotics. Probiotics are the beneficial bacteria which help in synthesizing vitamin K and digestion. They help us by giving vitamin K and digestion and we help them by providing nutrition and accommodation. That process is called as symbiosis, living together, helping each other. Now look at this thing, antibiosis. Bio means again two organisms. Anti means they are not helping each other, they are fighting with each other. Now what do you mean by this? Look at this. So Alexander Fleming was doing a petri dish experiment. In a petri dish he has taken nutrient agar. This nutrient agar helps microorganism to multiply. So, because this agar is there, all these microorganisms started developing and they are known as bacterial colonies. Now, accidentally a mold has fallen here. Mold is nothing but a fungal organism. Now, uh, after some time what he has observed is around this mold there is a zone called as zone of inhibition wherein bacteria could not grow. Why this has happened? This fungal organism releases certain chemicals and around this area bacteria could not grow. So this is leaving a chemical which is inhibiting the bacterial growth and this is what is called as antibiosis. You know this is happens because you have limited amount of this nutrient agar and if bacteria continue to multiply this organism, fungal organism will not get that nutrient. To save itself to get that food, it started releasing these chemicals and that chemicals will not allow multiplication of bacteria in this zone. So this is observed by Alexander Fleming. Then he thought if you use the same chemical in human being, they will not allow bacterial growth and that is what paved way for antibiotics. See, traditionally, the, de the traditional definition of antibiotic is a chemical obtained from a microorganism which will have adverse effects on another microorganism. For example, from fungi, penicillins are obtained and they have adverse effects on bacteria. So that is what is traditional definition of antibiotic. This has originated because of the concept called antibiosis. So this is about antibiosis. Moving further. Now, as I told you, in this video, we are going to discuss about cell wall inhibitors. And again, you can use drugs which will kill bacteria or control the growth of bacteria. The agents which will kill bacteria are known as sides, bacteriocide, side means to kill. Whereas the agents which will stop the growth are known as stats, bacteriostats. Now all cell wall inhibitors are bacteriocides. Why? I told you the importance of cell wall. Cell wall protect the organism from external pH, protect the cell from osmosis, protect the cells from external enzymes. So, without cell wall, bacteria cannot survive. If you break the cell wall, they cause 
cell death hence they are considered as bacteriocytes now in that you have beta lactams and then non beta lactams are there in the next video we'll say about beta lactams but in this video we, we're going to say about non beta lactams vancomycin bacitracin cyclosporin phosphomycin but in order to understand all these mechanisms of action we need to understand the cell wall structure which has got peptidoglycan peptidoglycan is also known as murine let us see about them see this peptidoglycan is made up of n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid see this one is this sorry this one is n acetyl glucosamine and this one is n acetyl muramic acid uh, see in order to simplify that i have given the structures here now look at them so these are all the basic units n acetyl glucosamine n acetyl muramic acid these two will combine and to this n acetyl muramic acid you have five amino acids are attached alanine glutamate lysine alanine and alanine look at the stereochemistry alanine is l again you have d configuration and then l and then d and t see the natural amino acids are all of l amino acids but bacteria has got this d the significance is human enzymes human beings has got protein breakdown enzymes proteases the job of proteases is they will digest or break down l amino acids but they cannot break down d amino acids because of this d configuration bacterial cell wall could survive in human beings if it is of l the human proteases can break it down so this is a simple unit of sorry this is a simple unit of peptidoglycan let me clear this so a simple unit of peptidoglycan is made up of these things what what do they have n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid to this n acetyl muramic acid you have five amino acids are there uh, the second one and the fourth and fifth one has got d configuration this is a simple unit now these units will bind with each other see again the another unit is coupled here so the another unit is bound with this bond again this unit again see the green ones are the bonds so see these are sugars so the bonds between the sugar happens with the presence of an enzyme called transglycosylase the job of this enzyme is form a bond between these sugars so this enzyme is important which will connect all these units transglycosylase second one now see these units has got these amino acids and these amino acids are cross linked with a pentaglycyl chain this is glycine five glycine amino acids will will form a cross bonding between two subunits of this peptidoglycan so this cross linking happens with the presence of an enzyme transpeptidase this is between amino acids so it is peptidase this one is between sugars so hence it is known as transglycosylase two of the enzymes now one more important enzyme is there look at this the d isomers are not naturally even in bacteria the l isomer is converted to d isomer with the help of an enzyme known as epimerase so epimerase alanine epimerase is responsible for converting l to d and this d and d alanine bond formation occurs with the help of ligase see all these enzymes are important transglycosylase is the enzyme responsible for connecting two peptidoglycan units transpeptidase forms cross linking epimerase and ligase are responsible for this last two amino acid formation and finally this n acetyl glucosamine is converted to n acetyl muramic acid inside the cell and this happens with the help of an enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate synthetase so all these enzymes are important to understand the mechanism of action so uh, let me brief these things you need to understand the basic units of peptidoglycan then everything will become clear so the same thing is explained here look at them see this one in is n acetyl muramic acid whereas this one is n acetyl glu glucosamine so for n acetyl muramic acid you have these amino acids are attached as i told you alanine glutamine lysine alanine so see the configuration see previously i have explained one more alanine is there this will be here but once the cross linking occurs the final amino acid goes out and only four amino acids left left over 
and the cross linking occurs with the help of this five glycine pentaglycine so for this to occur you need transpeptidase enzyme whereas the subunits of sugars will be connected with the help of transglycosylase enzyme and the last these two amino acids will form with the help of epimerase and ligase so these are all the important enzymes and to understand the mechanism of action you need to know this thing uh, if you have doubts repeat the video then you will you will understand all the things moving further now see these are the drugs vancomycin vancomycin is the drug and the target is transglycosylation look at here see the peptidyl uh, uh, the peptidoglycan units are bonded with this one this is transglycosidic bond and this bond forms with the help of transglycosylase enzyme so this is inhibited by vancomycin if vancomycin inhibits this the sugars cannot the units cannot combine and cell wall inhibition occurs cycloserine it inhibits alanyl racemase alanyl ligase so i told you this last two amino acids these two are formed with the help of two enzymes epimerase and ligase both of them are inhibited by cycloserine phosphomycin phosphoenal pyruvate synthetase this is responsible for converting see the nestl muramic acid can be converted to nestl glucosamine with the help of that enzyme phosphoenal pyruvate synthetase this is inhibited by phosphomycin the last one bacitracin inhibits bactoprenal understand the process see all these units are synthesized inside the cell in cytoplasm and they are carried to the outside of the cell with the help of a protein known as bactoprenal this is inhibited by bacitracin understand this uh, structure then you will understand this one see look at this see this is cell membrane so inside you have cytoplasm is there so this is cytoplasm so all these units peptidoglycan units are prepared inside the cell cytoplasm and they are sent outside so that the outside you have cell wall this is carried by bactroprenol and that is what is inhibited by bacitracin so this is the enzyme so again understand what is the drug what is the target after that see this is a simplified diagram again see all of them are synthesized inside the cell and they are sent outside through the with the help of bactoprenol this is inhibited by bacitracin and inside ll9 is converted to dl9 dl9 is combined with another ll9 and with the help of enzyme alanyl racemase alanyl ligase this is inhibited by cycloserine and see this nstl glucosamine is converted to nstl muramic acid with the help of an with the help of enzyme ept that is inhibited by phosphomycin now outside the chain elongation occurs with transglycosylase which is inhibited by vancomycin and all beta lactams inhibit transpeptidase with this single slide you will get mechanism of action of all cell wall inhibitors so understand this thing now when you see the uh, therapeutic uses vancomycin is see it is given in the form of iv and peroral it is used to treat skin and soft tissue infection bacteremia endocarditis pneumonia meningitis and clostridium difficile and mrsa means methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus this is vancomycin is very important now understand this one clostridium difficile uh, this infection is also known as super infection what happens is when people continuously use beta lactams all microorganisms all bacteria will get affected but this clostridium difficile at the colon is resistant to beta lactam and the population of clostridium difficile increases that is what causes colitis and this organism is sensitive to vancomycin so this is the choice of drug to treat colitis this is also known as super infection now bacitracin can only be used as topical and it is used to prevent skin and soft tissue infection and ophthalmic infection cycloserine is very specific to treat tuberculosis second line agent side effects are neurological side effects phosphomycin like bladder infection it is used to treat urinary tract infection very few side effects are there nausea msis and headache only these things are there so this is about non beta lactam antibiotics thank you all for watching this video